you will have that whole one hour, 56 minutes when no one on the ground can bother you. It's a beautiful thing. I'm back here for another video and sorry it's been so long but well I was with old Peggy for about five days filming a series and you guys don't know this but working with old Peggy is pretty much like trying to nail jello to a wall so yeah it's been a little bit but today we're at the John G shed aquarium we're gonna do a tour of this joint let's get inside and figure out what we're gonna do look at the pleco this thing is massive this thing is like the size of the pleco that's in my pond there's a whole tank full of spotted catfish. Polka dot catfish, rather. Look at all these guys. Massive things in here. Bunch of some sort of tetra back there. I don't know. I think that they're tetra, actually. I don't know what they are. Oh, look. There's a lizard. I really, really need to build that paludarium. I think we need one of these for the 100 gallon. Don't know where I'd find one. I'm, I, I do know where I find one. Actually, I don't think that these are legal in Texas. Another freshwater stingray. Some more plecos. Look at this guy. He's just chilling. This is actually a really cool aquarium as well. It's really kind of cool. Look at this. There's a quarry catfish in there, which he just swam up under there. It looks like, I'm not sure what kind of quarry catfish these are. Some shovel nose catfish. Looks like a yellow headed dart frog. Definitely cool. Look at this. That's old Zeckley's big brother. Look at the size of that thing. It's massive. That is an amazing angelfish. Look at all the neon tetras back there. Just thousands of them in here. Birds just chilling there, waiting to eat something, I'm sure. Absolutely a cool tank, though. I mean, like, this is really, really awesome. Just the thousands of neons are really cool back there with the angelfish and such. Some more neon tetras. There's a bunch of veil in here with some duckweed at the top, which is really cool. Look at the arapaima. This thing is massive. It's like the size of a car. The arapaima is so cool. But then again, the shovel nose catfish is really cool too. You cannot see the size of this thing, but it has to be at least 40 pounds. It's massive. Look at that thing. Such a cool fish. I need one of those. And a red tail. Look at all the plecos in here. Look at them back here eating on something. I don't know what they're chomping on, but they're chomping on something. Look at all of the Neon Tetra. So many Neon Tetra. Absolutely beautiful. Another good old size angelfish. We know how much old Fanatic loves angelfish. I wonder if I could jump in here, steal this thing, and take it home to him. Oh, look at that. You see it right there? Anybody can identify that right there? Well, just in case you can, that's called a Cucaracha fish. So we're moving into the saltwater section, and I honestly don't know a lot about saltwater fish. I've never owned a saltwater fish. So I'm gonna have to read a lot of cards and I'm gonna get a lot of these wrong. So please bear with me during this, but they're absolutely beautiful fish. And I, the first fish we're gonna come across is a monkey faced prickleback. And now we just have to find it in here. Well, I don't see any monkey faced pricklebacks. I see a lot of rockfish though. Like this is a rockfish. This up here is a rockfish. I do know that. Some sort of a rockfish, maybe a quillback rockfish. It's kind of what it looks like. Look at that little guy completely camouflaged in there. Some sort of a sole, maybe a butter sole. Check out this rockfish. 
he's just chilling. He's like, hey, hey guys, leave me alone while I uh, sit here and wait for something to come by because I'm going to eat it. Yep, that's a no. California more? Let me tell you something. That's not a more. <laughs> I am definitely not in love with that. A more. Italian for love, in case you guys didn't know. Some orange roughy. Look at that. That is a swell shark, I'm pretty sure. Not sure why exactly I know that that's a swell shark. Actually, I do know why that's a swell shark. Uh, I went to, let's see, was it the Vancouver Aquarium? And they were actually breeding swell sharks in small little bags that you could actually walk up and see. It was one of the coolest things ever. And I don't remember why that was. I think that's because these swell sharks are not very aggressive and they can coexist in a community tank like this without causing any issues. But look at them. Absolutely a beautiful fish. Here comes another one. Look at that. So pretty. Check out the tube snouts. My, the coolest fish in this tank, if I can find it, is actually called a bay pipe fish. And we're gonna find it. So I've went over this plant one time. Let's go over it again. And if you can identify it, let me know. All right, so I'm going to show you where this thing is at now because it is very difficult to see. But if you look in this plant here, it is right there. Literally, this little stringy thing right here, that's actually a fish. Like I said, that's called a bay pipe fish and it totally camouflages itself all up into this kelp. Like you can't even see it hardly, especially when it's up in there good. Like right now, he's kind of just hanging out, but you totally cannot see that thing. Another rockfish, flag rockfish to be exact. Look at this. That is a California scorpion fish. And he's just chilling, hanging out, just like, hey, hey guys. This green spotted rockfish, gopher rockfish. I think these are blue rockfish. And then you have some just regular old ocean whitefish. Tons of those in here. Look at these guys. I actually happen to know what everything in this tank is. So this right here is a snipe fish. And then you move up here and you have a pineapple fish. And if you notice, it looks like a pineapple. It's actually spiked like a pineapple. And if you go on further up, you see some orange fish in the very back up there. Uh, those are red sea perch. Oh, I didn't see that one. There's a French hogfish. Really cool fish. Oh, check this guy out. He's an oscillated dragon head. Really cool, cool fish. That thing, you find that in the Indian and Pacific Ocean. So. Kind of like around southern Japan to Southeast Asia and then all the way around to Northeast Australia. But that is a cool fish, no doubt. Whole bunch of seahorses. All right, another one of the cool exhibits I always enjoy at the aquarium is what they find locally in their local area. And because we're around the Great Lakes states, so that's fresh water, and we're going to look at what they have. You can't see in this tank because it's so cold in here. Look at these guys. Look at this. I'm not sure what that guy is, but still pretty cool. Burbot. Look at these guys. Koi. Some round goby. All invasive species to this part of the country. These are this is a whole tank of sea lampreys, which are very much like a leech, and they literally just sit and feed, and they will kill all kinds of species of fish. Catfish, some gar. You have a short nose gar and a long nose gar. There's some bass back in there. Look at these big head carp. Massive. The white sturgeon. Look at the fish poop in this thing. Really dope planted aquarium here. I'm not sure what's in here. They don't have any type of indication. I spot some of the fish that I recognize. These are blackfin rasboras. 
And that is a Moonlight Garami. Let's see what else is in here. A whole bunch of flying foxfish actually in here. I don't really see anything else in here. Got all the cichlid in this tank. I mean, that's a cool cichlid. That's a Hippo Point Salmon cichlid. It's actually a really pretty cichlid. I wonder if it'll come back out. There. Really cool cichlid. There's a leopard catfish in here. You just swam under. Really cool fish. It's an African tiger fish. Now here is a cool cichlid tank. More specifically, the spindle hap cichlid. Whole ton of cichlids. There's a dolphin cichlid. Cichlids really enjoy the rock structures in their tanks. I think I'm gonna get one of these cichlid tanks at some point. I do enjoy a cichlid tank. It's probably my favorite. These are called Mexican Blind Cave Tetra, which is interesting. Can't really see them that great, but very cool fish. They are very active and moving around, but apparently they live in cave lakes and rivers throughout Mexico. Really cool. It's a Chinese crocodile lizard. Look at the mountain horned dragon. It's got a cool enclosure. This is a whole entire area of different kinds of fish. I'm gonna run a uh, montage of this real quick, just so you guys can see them all. And you don't have to sit here and listen to me talk. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. beluga whales at the aquarium. How cool is that? What's going on guys? So I am uh, gonna send you guys back to Dallas, Texas right now to take a look at all the fish around the house. We haven't seen those guys in a while and I'll see you in just a moment. What is going on guys? So we are back here in Dallas. You're right in the middle of whatever I am doing in Chicago and I've brought you back here just so I could give you an update on the fish. So uh, this update is being done on Monday morning, Labor Day. Uh, so it depends on when this video comes out, but yeah, I, I just wanted to give you an update on the fish. So let's check out the 100 gallon. So everybody's looking good in the 100 gallon. You got Zeckley and Billy, all the Buenos Aires Tetra, the other male guppies. Uh, the Albano Red Tails shark is out. All the Cory catfish, the Serpe Tetra. Back there, you got Mr. Pleco on the back side of that driftwood. You got the Featherfin catfish over here. So let's go over here and check on everything else. So here's the Neon Tetra. They're all looking good. You got the original Beta. He's looking good, happy. The Blackwater tank. You can see through it now. It's still hard to see. I have footage from the other day. I'm gonna show you from this so you can see it. All right guys, so I'm actually gonna drop this footage in a video. It's like 1.30 in the morning and I was doing some water changes and cleaning some stuff up. And I went in and did a water change on this tank, which is the black water tank. And yeah, I wanted to at least show you. So what you have down here is you have a bunch of neon tetra. There are six total. You have the Paradise Beta up here. The Anubius is looking good. There's an Amazon sword in here that's looking good. I don't remember what this thing is. I did take the frog bit out of the tank, which was basically all the plant that was on the top that was dropping its kind of roots down into the water. It's a very pretty kind of plant and it, w it looked good, but I was having a problem with it surviving. I'm not really sure what was going on with it. it started turning brown and, you know, 
certain pieces of it started turning brown and I just decided, you know what, uh, I'm just gonna take this stuff out. I gotta do some more research on how to actually care for that. So I went and took it out, but uh, you know, the water hasn't completely settled down yet from the water change, but everything in here looks good now. So yeah, and I wanted to at least show you what it looked like just honestly because you really couldn't see in it due to it being so dark not nearly as dark as you can see there are the neon tetra so yeah so like i said i think this thing looks really good so i wanted to at least get a video at night when there's not a bunch of lights on oh another thing is is i took the indian almond leaves out for right now this piece of driftwood right here is actually uh it had been heat treated to prevent tannins from being released so it was definitely the indian almond leaves that were causing so much darkness to the water you can take those tannins out by boiling them and some other methods but i, I will get back to that i actually want to do a couple of different things in this tank so i am going to rescape it at one point i'm not really sure when that's going to happen but for right now everything seems to be looking pretty good in it let's take a look at the guppies the guppies look how pregnant they are so large and pregnant though they should be having babies soon and then finally here are the new babies look at all of the fry so this is the fry tank uh, this is a fluval tank that is low flow filtration uh, that you know you can basically raise your fry in so uh, this is something that Brenton actually surprised me with the other day but he uh yeah he lost the footage we're, we're working on that <laughs> So anyway, but these are the fry and there are tons of them in here, which is awesome. Anyway, I'm gonna push you back over to whatever I am doing in Chicago. All right, well, all the fish are doing well, it looks like, and yeah, had a great time today here at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, Illinois. It is uh, definitely a cool place to see. Still like the New England Aquarium the best so far out of all the aquariums I've been to, but this one was definitely cool. It's definitely worth the money because it is huge and there's a lot of interactive stuff for you to do. So with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully you guys enjoying the content. Let me know below, do you actually enjoy seeing these aquarium tours and things like that? If you do, comment below and let me know what else you would like to see. What other types of tours? Animal sanctuaries, zoos, all that kind of stuff. Let me know. I'll definitely make it happen. If you haven't followed me on Instagram or you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do that now. And guess what? I also have a Facebook now. So I'm going to drop that in the description. Make sure you go find me on Facebook. Christopher Scott is the name. Don't have anybody on there that has liked the page yet because I literally just created it. So like I said, I'll drop the link to the Facebook in the description below. Make sure you go give me a like on that page. There will be some other things that will come to that. So if you don't have Instagram and you do have Facebook, at least you'll be able to get in contact with me and see things that happen on Instagram. Basically everything that's going on Instagram will go on Facebook, but there will be certain content that only goes on each of those. So make sure you go like my page on Facebook. Once again, link in the description. So with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed and we will see you next time.